All right, welcome back to day five of your distance learning. Uh, hope you're enjoying your stay at home. Uh, congratulations, by the way. You guys have successfully completed uh, Unit 9, which was on right triangles. Uh, so you've got successfully completed that. There's not going to be a test on that or anything. Uh, but again, uh, those applications of SOHCAHTOA problems uh, with angle of ele elevation and angle of depression was the last objective for that unit. So we're going to start a new unit. Uh, that unit's going to be on uh, area, and I'll get into what that is. Um, but these are the day one notes that are located in your folder. Uh, there's the blank version and the completed version. If you just want to fill in a blank version, that's fine. Uh, if you just want to look at the completed ones while I go through this, that's fine as well. Or if you just want to watch as I go along. Uh, but your homework will be based off of what I cover in here. Uh, so objective for the day is to be able to uh, calculate areas of parallelograms and triangles. And that's what we're going to look at today. So unit nine, this should say this should say unit nine day one up here. So let's fix that. So unit nine day one. Jumping ahead to unit ten. All right, so unit nine day one again is on area. Uh, area is two dimensional. Whoops, what happened there? There we go. It is two dimensional, 2D flat space. Uh, it is basically uh, the number of squares that fit inside of a shape. So again, uh, the two dimensional flat space in there here, what mathematicians had to do is they had to kind of cut this up into pieces. Uh, so they wanted to measure this area in here, so they cut it up into pieces. Now the pieces they cut up is they cut them up into squares. And so basically what you want to do is count up the number of squares. They quickly do that, uh, but basically what we're going to do is we're going to find the number of squares that fit inside. So you might have heard of square units. That's where it's coming from. Find number of squares. That's what we're trying to do for all of these. Perimeter, we've looked at that before. Perimeter is the distance around the outside of a shape. I'll type that in. Distance around a shape. And you can find that by adding up all the sides. Add up the sides, add up all the sides to find that. So area and perimeter kind of go together. Area is the amount of squares that fit on the inside, and then the perimeter is the distance around the outside, and you can find that by adding up the sides of the shape. So a parallelogram, remember what a parallelogram is, a definition of it would be a quadrilateral with two pair of parallel sides. So typically when you see them drawn Oh, they look like this. Again, one pair of parallel sides would be this one and this one. The other pair would be this one and this one. So now for any parallelogram, uh, you can find the area or the number of squares that fit inside by using a formula. And that formula is area is equal to B times H. Pretty simple formula. And I'll tell you what each thing means. So 
So B, first of all, you're probably guessing already, that is the area or the length of the base. So that is the base. And then the H stands for the height. Now the base and height over the next several units are going to start to become super important. Base and height have to be perpendicular to each other always and forever. So let's put that in there. Base and height must be perpendicular. If they're not perpendicular, that means they're not the base and the height. All right, so let's take a look at this shape here. So the important thing is base height must be perpendicular. So from this picture here, the base and the height, uh, if I call this one the base, so this is my B. Notice how these two sides are not perpendicular to that base, so that means neither of those is the height. The height would be this distance here, which isn't really drawn in, but it's going to be perpendicular to the base, so that would make up your height. So whatever those two measurements are, you can multiply those, and that will give you the area of the shape. So problems here. So again, first wants me to find the perimeter. I have to add up all the sides. In a parallelogram, there's kind of a pattern. You're always going to have two sides that are the same across from each other. So these two will be both be 23. So this will be 23. And then these opposite sides will also be the same. So these will be 21. So you can do that by doing 2 times 23, because there's two sides that are 23, plus the other two sides, which are both 21. So plus 2 times 21. So it helps you find the perimeter kind of quickly. So then I can do that on my calculator then. So 2 times 23, 2 times 23 plus 2 times 21. So the perimeter on that works out to be 88. And that would be in inches, centimeters, whatever it's measured in. So that's the perimeter. So now area, I need to use base times height on this. So base times height. Keeping in mind that base and height have to be perpendicular to one another. So I notice a perpendicular right here. That means I'm going to use this 23 as the base and this 19 as the height. So this would be 23 times 19. So I go to my calculator, do 23 times 19 real quick. 23 times 19. And that is 437. So that means there's 437 little tiny squares that would fit inside there. So 4, 3, seven and again that would be square units it's the amount of squares that would fit inside this shape so down here same thing smaller numbers so let's go ahead and find the perimeter so I see two sides that are four this is a four that's a four and then I see two sides that are ten that's a ten and so is this so again the perimeter would be two times ten plus 2 times 4. That you can do in your head. Don't need to go to the calculator on that one. It's nice when the numbers are small. So in this one, this is 20. This is 8. Put them together, you got 28. So the perimeter on that is 28 inches or centimeters, whatever it's measured in. Area remembers base times height. So base times height, base and height, again, have to be perpendicular. 
So here's my perpendicular. That makes this the base and this the height. So this would equal 10 times 5, 5 times 10, 10 times 5. So that is equal to 50. And again, that's in square units. So the number of squares that would fit inside. Down here, again, another example. Again, I would do 2 times 21 plus 2 times 17. The base and height now are going to be this uh, height here, which I don't know. Why don't we do this one? So let's see, perimeter 2 times 21, because there's two sides that are 21. And then I got to add on to that two sides that are 17. So again, 2 times 21. Plus 2 times 17. Whoop, let's read that up. plus 2 times 17. I think that's right. Let me see. Yep, 2 times 21 plus 2 times 17. So my perimeter works out to be 76. So that's my perimeter. All right, so the area in this one's a little bit harder. Uh, the area in this one, I'm looking for my base and the height. So remember, area is base times height. So I find the perpendicular. It's right here. So that means this is my base, which I don't know. Oh, no, it's going to be the same as the opposite side, right? So this would be 21. What I'm missing is I'm missing this height that I need to use for my area. So quickly I'm like how am I gonna do this I'm missing the height I won't be able to use the formula but then I noticed something we just finished up a unit on right triangles and I have a right triangle right here well I have two sides of the right triangle so from last unit I remember that if I have two sides of a right triangle I can find the third and again I would have to use something called Pythagorean's theorem which is going to be a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared so that's what I'm going to use right here so a squared, so remember a squared and b squared have to be the legs, they have to make the right angle, and then the c squared is the hypotenuse. So the a and the b make the right angle, that would mean these two are the legs. So I would call this h squared, which is what I'm looking for. And the other leg now is the 8, so I square that. And then it's going to equal the hypotenuse squared, which is 17. And again, I have to square that. Kids sometimes forget the square. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the calculator at this point. And algebraically, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to move this 8 squared over by subtracting it. So I'm going to do 17 squared, and then I'm going to subtract out the 8 squared. So let's see if we can do that. So 17 squared. Squared button's right here. And I subtract out the 8 squared. I'm left with this. So remember that's h squared is equal to that. So h squared is equal to this. So h squared equals 225. So now to get rid of the squared on the h squared, see the squared, I gotta get, I get rid of it so I can figure out what the height is. You have to square root both sides. So I'm gonna square root this side, and I'm gonna square root that side. So then I'm gonna figure out what this h is by finding the square root of 225. So go to the calculator, so I'm going to square root, remember second square root, and 225. And I end up with 15. So that means my height on this is 15, which is what I needed for the formula. So this is 15. And now I can use my formula. So let's see. He's red again. So my base is what it's perpendicular to, and that's this 21 right here. Then I'm going to multiply that times the height, which I just calculated to be 15. So 
So I'm going to do 21 times 15. That'll give you my area. 20